Welcome back to Shop Foreman Garage. Previously on Shop Foreman Garage. We are gonna to have to pull the interior out of this thing. I know, interiors, they're fun, right? Ah, look at this. That is definitely rotten. nothing in here. There's nothing holding this. Oh no, that's broken too. Well, you can see this thing has seen better times, that's for sure. If you haven't seen any part of this series, I will put a link right up here in the top. You can go back, watch from the beginning, uh, see what all we're doing with this car and all the plans we have. Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Warmer Garage. Today we are working on the Dragon Drive car and nothing really specific, but we got a lot of stuff we gotta do. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I've changed my mind on a couple things and uh let's just i'm just gonna walk you through you know where we're at right now um of course uh last time we took out the interior and here's uh, most of all the interior sitting right here i need to get this junk out of here uh, so we can work on the car um, i think uh, some of the stuff that uh, we're not going to be using i will be taking back to uh, a storage uh, unit uh, the seats, front and rear seats, that AC and heater unit right there. Um, a lot of that stuff over there that I'm not going to be using. I just need to get more room here. This carpet, I'm not going to throw this carpet out, at least not yet, until I uh, figure out what I'm going to do. I'm definitely getting new carpet, but uh, I just want to save on that just because you never know. Uh, that audio unit, this, all these speakers and stuff, this catalytic converter, um, all these panels right here, these are all gonna have to be cleaned up and painted. And um, also need to work over that center console right there, make sure, you know, that's gonna be good. Uh, and of course, clean up the um, cluster and um, all that stuff. We've got all these wires and everything hanging right here. Um, and we need to get this harness out of here. Uh, I'd like to push the car out and just, you know, get the power sprayer and just wash all this stuff down before we start really tearing into it. Um, but uh, I, did, I did order some parts. Uh, I've been looking like crazy on the uh, Google web and I found uh, a couple places that sell uh, parts for these vehicles and uh, haven't ordered a whole bunch, but I mean, you can go down a rabbit hole looking for those parts. Like I need that, I need that, I need that, I need that, yeah. Um, so uh, I haven't ordered uh, any of those parts yet, um, but uh, I did get um, the, uh, um, I got some uh, cleaner, you know, for cleaning out the engine bay, that hasn't come yet. I um, ordered some primer, I ordered some paint. I, um, we're gonna basically scuff and spray this uh, um, engine compartment and the front of the vehicle and the inside right there and make it look like brand new is the idea. Although I have not ordered that paint yet because I need to get the vehicle down. I can't get the vehicle down with all this stuff right here in the way. But I need to move that, I need to get the vehicle down, and I think the paint trim code is in the trunk, in that little glove box, and I need to get that so I can get the right um, color of paint. 
also uh, I've been looking and thinking and dreaming I guess this um, this rear end um, I thought for a little while it's like you know what I'm not gonna go with the 10 bolt I want to upgrade you know but uh, it is so expensive and I definitely want to put um, uh, some um, disc disc brake you know set up on the rear of this because it's got drum and uh, so I've been looking at kits for that I've also been looking at kits for the front too and I don't want to order anything until I know exactly what I'm gonna get I don't want you know I mean the I would rather buy kits that come with calipers that are already powder coated and I don't want red powder coated uh, calipers in the back black cal you know powder coated calipers in the front or whatever I'd rather go with black you know it's uh, more discreet I guess but uh, so none of that's been ordered uh, one thing I did do is I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it I have uh, m most of my parts from the, from the very beginning a lot of the parts that I ordered were for um, basically getting this engine to have uh, the least amount of air restriction and the um, best um, possibility of uh, running fuel to the, uh, the Holly fuel injection system. And um, I had, I bought that Holly um, fuel pump set up, came with all the lines and everything like that. And uh, the idea was to stick the fuel pump on the, um, on the frame rail you know and rather than having it in the tank that way if something goes bad i can you know replace it without having to drop the tank or whatever well this car don't have a frame rail you know it's a unibody it has a subframe in the rear it has a subframe in the front matter of fact we are going to put those subframes together because uh, we have a subframe connecting kit and a bunch of stuff and i got all these parts sitting over here uh here's my uh eight point uh roll cage it says the uh, parts are missing actually i got the parts and here's this part I had a crossbar missing and some other stuff here's the loop it's uh and uh i haven't um not ready to to do that yet because i need to buy a quality welder and uh they're expensive and i just uh haven't gotten around to it i have one i'm looking for but i'm waiting for it to go on sale so um but um the decision i did make is uh i'm not gonna use that holly uh fuel and uh fuel pump setup uh, I'm gonna go with a different setup, one with a fuel pump in the tank, and we're gonna do the controversial uh, fuel door, and uh, so I'll show you how that's gonna work. Um, uh, I thought about it for a long time. It's like I don't know. I don't want to cut a hole in the fuel in the in the, in the body, but um, it's just gonna be easier if we have to. Um, swap out pumps for whatever reason um, and uh, so I went ahead and ordered a, a compartment lid that has not come in yet um, but we're gonna end up uh, cutting a hole in the body uh, for the fuel tank of course we need to get the fuel tank out we need to drop the um, the uh, rear axle um, and I believe we're just gonna you know it, it's kind of you know run what you brung you know we got a 10 bolt that has a GM posit track it's good it's a it's a good setup it's you know it, it's I'm just gonna run with that you know so we're gonna take this uh, axle out and we're gonna put the other one from the other car in and of course we're gonna clean it up and everything and um, put uh, a uh, disc brake setup on it but we're not gonna do that today what I need to do is uh, move all this stuff out of the way to pack some of this stuff up so I can take it to the storage unit and um, let's uh, get up in here and uh, let's see what we can do okay here's where we are right here with this it's pretty much the same way that we left it off I haven't done anything um, and we still got all this wiring and everything uh, this all this trash um, 
all of this, everything has to come out. Everything. Uh, we're going to take this wiring harness out. Um, and of course, this uh, AC or this blower unit just grounded right here. And that needs to come off. That's going into storage. We don't need that anymore. Uh, this entire wiring harness has to come out. This entire engine bay needs to be cleaned up. Uh, probably going to pull all this out, which of wipers, with motor, all that stuff. Um, needs to be taken out of here so this can be completely cleaned up scuffed painted don't know how bad it is this needs to be of course vacuumed up and the same way with all of this in here the um, that wiring harness is gonna come out and um, all of this flooring this needs to be cleaned up and and um, just washed and uh, I may, um, thinking about like getting some dyno mat or something like that and putting it on here to stop, you know, any, you know, resonating sounds, you know, all of this trim has to come out, the rear carpet and everything needs to come out of here. So this can all be cleaned up. And of course the uh, fuel, door is going to go under the carpet right over here. Uh, I still got my T-tops in here. Um, one thing, and <clears throat> I don't know if y'all remember from the last uh, video, we were in the front up there uh, looking at the rear seats, how the rear seats are coming out. I had this this hatch open and I just happened to have my, my light sitting right here and this hatch decided to close. It closed down on it. It pushed this in and it stripped or ruined that gear or whatever. I believe, I believe this thing, we're gonna have to take it apart and fix it, see if it actually stripped that gear. If it did, we got to buy parts. Uh, let me put this down so it doesn't fall because it, it, won't, it won't latch now. So there's something going on. And we never checked it out to see if it actually worked. I'm pretty sure that it did the last time, you know, when it was still running. But one thing that didn't work is these headlamps. So this uh, motor right here, I think if I twist it enough, it may actually come up. I'm not sure which way do I twist, um, but it uh, these these things are stripped. These so uh, they're unplugged. They've been unplugged for years, and they um, actually you can buy these uh, motors for they're like 150 bucks. You know, half the price that they used to be. You know, back in the day, of course they're uh, aftermarket, um, but they make kits. You can take these apart and you can replace the gears on the inside. Sometimes it's bushings that have just, you know, crumbled and come apart. Sometimes it's a stripped gear. And uh, I would like to put power and ground to these and find out, you know, um, if uh, what they do, take them apart, look at them, figure out which kit I need to get that, rather than buying all the kits and seeing what happens. Um, so that's uh, just some of the stuff that uh, we need to get through. and. Um, I think um, what I'd like to do is start in the back and um, just start taking all that trim, that carpet and all that stuff out of there and uh, let's just uh, clean it all out on the inside. Let's do that. Look at that. I'm getting this um, this jack and uh, spare tire and there. Here's a spare tire right there. Um, but <laughs> look at that. So what's holding this jack on here is a bolt. 
a bolt in which you need an inverted Torx socket to get it off because I can't turn it. You know, maybe if I had a pair of pliers, um, I could get it off. So I need this inverted Torx socket that of course was not with the vehicle. So if you're stuck on the side of the road, you don't have any tools, you can't, and you got a flat tire, you can't even get your jack out. So I don't know who would have possibly thought that was a good idea. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, let's finish taking this thing apart. So here's that unit, and <clears throat> I mean it has a latch, which latches, of course. This is the anti-latch or um, solenoid. When you hit the button up front, it unlatches for you, uh, which of course has this cable that goes around to right there, which is where the key is. And then it has this mechanism right here. This it slides in here. It's got this blue grease. I completely forgot about the GM blue grease. But uh, right here, uh, I don't know. If you can see that. There's a crack. That, I mean, this whole thing is plastic. So I don't know if it, the thing popped out. It cracked. You know, it's. It's right along there. I can move this and I can see the crack. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. You can see the, the thing moving on the inside just from rocking this back and forth. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to pull this out and it's gonna have to be, we're gonna have to go through this. I'm, I know this thing's been uh, rebuilt before. Our parts have been replaced on it. Don't remember which parts. I used to have a couple of these sitting around just in case because I knew you know they can be delicate you can't slam the the door um, but anyway um, I have to pull this out and uh, let's uh, get all that trim out over there Let's look and see what we got here. Um, this is where that glove box used to be, and there's a big area down there that was never utilized for anything. Um, this uh, seam sealer right here is not doing too good. It's just like crumbling apart. It's really nasty and sticky, and probably I think what I want to do is grind off all the seam sealer in here and just put some new stuff this this is nasty i don't know what that is it's like almost like tar 
it looks like oil but it's not there's no oil here and this these things are leaking you know from the heat uh, who knows but i mean you got a sound ending mat right here right and then you got these little pieces right here that doesn't do anything Look, I, don't, I don't know if you can hear that that's like a drum right there so not much sound ending look at that you got a screw coming up from the bottom my guess is this has something to do with the person who ever put the exhaust in <laughs> I have no idea that is ridiculous <laughs> oh god the young kids you know putting stuff on their car uh, that would be funny we go underneath there and find out that's from some kind of underglow kit or something like that I mean um, that is ridiculous but the way this thing resonates um, yeah, I think that we're going to probably get some kind of dyno mat or something. We're going to try and cover as much area as we possibly can to just stop that resonating sound. Um, not that it was really, really bad before, but if we can make it better, why not? You know, <clears throat> one, another thing that's kind of weird. So because this vehicle has T-tops, it's got these brackets that are welded on right here and here. Okay and i didn't know about this i don't know what this is i mean i guess it's solid but uh, whenever we put that roll cage in we got the struts that are going to come back from the cage they're going to come back over here and they're going to to have to uh be welded on right here of course i got plates that'll have to be welded on and then the, that pipe will have to be you know adjusted the length and then welded in place so probably going to be welded over this or half of this half that who knows we'll just have to see and right here in the center is where we're going to cut the hole right in the middle of the drum and um, the fuel tank basically sits right underneath this and of course we're pulling the fuel tank out so we're going to pull the fuel tank out before we start doing any of this stuff <clears throat> this right here in case you didn't know there was a little hole in the carpet right there and this is where this hook right here I believe it's this hook right here it is supposed to hook on and that's where you mount your tire whenever you put your spare tire on and you got to take a tire off a tire and wheel that's how you mount it in there until you can get to the service station or whatever and get your tire fixed or replaced <clears throat> so pretty much got all of this out um let's see i want to look at this real quick this is where the shocks should be i think yeah top of the shock and <laughs> of course they are original right so that's where they go that's let's see what this one looks like yeah i mean i don't know not too bad for original i guess but this this seam sealer oh my god and you can see the seam right there and the stuff is just crumbling it's not sealing anymore we might as well get rid of it right so i end up pulling all this stuff off scraping it off um, i might get a cheek poker in here start whizzing away at it and then we'll get a new seam sealer and uh, all of this it's all the same this is nasty might as well just take this out I mean oh my god look at that yeah I mean yeah that's a lot of seam sealer and it ain't doing anything so we'll get all of that replaced i'm gonna go ahead and pull the headliner the headliner is gonna have to come out anyway so i might as well pull it it's dirty needs to be cleaned um maybe replace there is uh, areas of it that have faded a little bit these seat belts 
Uh, I've been thinking about it a long time and pretty much we're not going to use these seatbelts anymore so we might as well pull these seatbelts out and, and you know stop this up so there ain't no hole there anymore uh, maybe uh, I don't know the um, headliner and areas is starting to you know it lose its shape which uh, it's not that big of a deal right here it's good you know but you come over here there's a big old gap right there and there's not much holding this headliner up I believe this headliner it's been replaced before and I believe it's a uh, uh, fiberglass rather than the old cardboard so um, this uh, pull the headliner out and these um, sun visors they're gonna have to be recovered too so let's get the sun visors out get the headliner out and see what's up there Okay guys, if you know where the trim codes are on this vehicle, please let me know because I can't find them. Um, I thought for sure, I mean usually they're in the glove box or they're in the trunk or they're where the spare tire goes or uh, something like that. <clears throat> um, or maybe even in the door, uh, door jam or something like that. Uh, so what I got, I got this information right here, which is not trim codes, um, but there's a lot of good information there. That's not the trim codes. Um, and of course, this, I thought for sure that it was in here. This is the center console and there is some junk in there, but I thought for sure Man, I was really sure that it was glued to the side of this center console right here. And I do not see it at all. So then I'm like, well, there's a glove box right here. This is uh, the trim from the back. Here's the glove box. And there is no trim in there, our, our, our trim codes. There's nothing, I don't see anything at all. Then I thought, you know, the spare tire, here's a spare tire cover and there's instructions on how to 
inflate and deflate the spare tire, you know, um, and no, no trim coats at all. So I have no idea. I don't know where they are. Um, if I look over here in this door, there's the VIN information. No trim coats. No trim coats at all. But I can see here's where the spare tire goes. I don't see anything. No trim coats. This is where the glove box was. No trim coats. So <clears throat> the reason why I'm looking for the trim coats is because uh, I want to get the um, exact paint code. I need to get, I need to get the paint code. So I know this is. They used to call it pure white, um, but I don't want to get it mixed up with what they called Arctic white. And I'm pretty sure those names are what um, the sales department used um, whenever the vehicle was sold. And they would, you would look at those uh, little things to see what colors or whatever. I think those were the names on them. Not necessarily the same names that the parts department used whenever you looked at the trim code. Um, I looked it up online and all it says is white. It's like this year, it should just be white. But I know that there was an Arctic white and you saw that on Camaros, I've seen it on Firebirds and it is a very, very bright white and this is not that. This is kind of a, I mean, when you look at it, it looks white. It's, it's a white color, you know, but whenever you compare it to the Arctic white, if you had them side by side, that Arctic white is really bright. This is not that bright. This is more of a deeper type of white, almost an off-white. But to me, it doesn't look like an off-white. It's just like a deeper, more stylish white, you know? And that's just my opinion. Um, but I, I cannot find the trim codes, and I wanna be sure before I order that paint if any of you guys know where the trim codes are or what this white is or what the trim code is for and you're you can guarantee it you know just please let me know run around down in the comments and let me know um until uh, then i'm gonna continue to look for them and try and figure it out um uh, we should uh get the inside uh cleaned up and so let's do that now
All right, this is where we're at so far. Still got to do with this harness. Um, I got um, most of the stuff vacuumed out of here. It looks a little bit cleaner. It's not that bad, really, in there. Uh, but all this has to come out. <laughs> Look at that right there. See, self-tapping screw coming through the bottom. There's another one right here. It was wrapped around. Got the carpet wrapped around it. And let's see, on the other side, there was that one sitting right there. <laughs> so, um, and I vacuumed this all out, vacuumed all that out. Uh, and got this pretty much vacuumed out. There's another one sitting right there. Um, yeah, and there's another one right there. Got all this vacuumed out here. Trying to clean this up here. And yeah, most of this, I need to sweep that out. I can't get down that far. There's some rust right here. This is gonna have to be taken care of. And uh, most all this stuff needs to go. This harness, I'm not really not sure because it connects to that. It goes down in there. Go, loops all the way around and goes up into there so I'm not exactly sure which harness we're gonna have to deal with that and of course uh, I'm gonna replace this battery tray so for sure I'm replacing the battery tray I may even replace these try and get these out and clean them up they're not you know they're they're still solid it's not like they're crumbling or anything of course it would look better if they were white uh, same way with this one right here it's not broken or cracked. It's still pretty solid. Um, all this needs to be cleaned out too. This, uh, yeah, there's some rust down in there. I gotta take care, I gotta get rid of this EVAP system, pull the cruise control out, and all this unnecessary stuff. Um, there's this right here, all these wires. This used to be a glow light system, so this all needs to come out. And this is probably the reason for those self-tapping screws that are poking up through the thing. Look, there's one right there poking up. Um, and there's a lot of rust coming in here. This needs, we need to get rid of, well, not rid of, but we need to get all this stuff out. Just everything out of here. We need to pull the AC condenser, um, AC hoses, need to get this front bumper off get these uh headlights out um all this needs to be all cleaned up we need to deal with that rust this rust right here uh, so there's a lot to do a lot we still need to do i want to pull that cross member out but of course before I do that, I want to pull the lower control arms off, the spindle, pull out the struts, um, and all that stuff. Then this will be easier to drop out. I just don't know, there's a lot of stuff missing from the front of this car now. And if I start dropping everything, it's going to be back heavy. I don't want to put the thing on the lift and have it fall over because of that. Um, but. Um, uh, we're definitely gonna have to do something. Um, I need to get this uh, cross member out of here so I can get it all cleaned up. I need to get all this the steering, everything out so this entire bay can be completely cleaned up. It is uh, absolutely ridiculously dirty. And so uh, I'm just gonna start uh, just taking, taking stuff out, I guess. And Let's we'll see what happens.
right, this is where we are. Um, got the C100 connector off. And of course this, uh, you know, um, comes off into two different connectors. So I need to take that off. One of them goes up front for headlights and everything. And the uh, other one is everything else. Uh, starter, uh, alternator, uh, stuff like that. Um, wiring and stuff needed for the gauges so that uh, they can operate properly um, look at this I'm so happy and surprised actually um, if you look at this hole right there that's a hole going into the into the cabin right there there's no grommet or anything on it these wires right here get those out these are wires that went to the battery for those amps that were in the back right and they're just running through here and running right here right here up into there and of course it's stuck in all this wiring right now but the one thing that is actually amazing to me is um, the fact that we didn't have mice and rodents and stuff running around inside here chewing everything up um, I thank God because uh, I mean it was so bad out there that uh, I just can't imagine what it would have been like in here if it had to deal with with that right there that, that sounds ridiculous so um, I don't know why the the rodents didn't get in here and as a matter of fact I know that um, this happened of course while the thing was sitting because before that it was being driven you know practically every day and um, I know that there were mice well I thought that I had uh, like a filled mice a filled mouse or filled rat or something like that in my garage a matter of fact I know that I did because I killed a couple of them you know uh, way back this was way back um, and then I didn't think I had any other mice any rodent problems or anything in my garage my garage is just a typical garage it wasn't it's not like a barn or anything like that um, so uh, it's amazing the amount of rodent damage and stuff that's in here because I had no idea that was going on you know and so um, and I'm just amazed and so happy that they did not get inside the vehicle because oh my god that would have been so much worse uh, but look at this and, and I've already shown you how this um, seam sealer looks right and some of it looks pretty bad you know right it's, it's like what the heck is going on all the seam sealer it's just it's coming apart you know it's just it's nasty but if I go up here or back here rather look at the seam sealer back here and I mean it's it's good there's a little bit of I don't know if that's like mold or something on it but other than that I mean it's good it really is all the way around you know even down back in there you know it's just it's like it starts right there it's like no more you know and this seam still is even painted and then it's like nope unless they started using different stuff i have no idea but that i just uh, thought that was kind of weird and i thought that i would point that out um, so we got the um, got the brake booster off. We're gonna end up taking this um, this off. I just don't want to do it right away. Oh, look at that! Some marble. Huh. That's a front pocket find. Um, yeah, I'm, I need to get. We're gonna have to go through this. Uh, oh my god, okay. Right here. This harness coming out of here. They got these two wires and they're just chewed off. I don't know what they went to. 
They're just chewed off. It's supposed to go into this clamp right there. So this is gonna have to be gone through. Uh, but I just need to start just taking this stuff out. Um, I think that, uh, hmm. I think I'd like to get this harness out of here. So I'm gonna have to drop down the steering column there, these two wires right here go to this door pin switch right there. So I don't want to mess up the door pin switch. Hmm. Yeah. But I really don't want to cut the wires. So I'll see how I can get that out. Now this wiring harness right here it goes up into the c100 uh, i don't know if you can see that so i need to take the c100 connector out so it comes out this way i need to get this nest of wires off of the column i have to drop the column down and then we still got all this aftermarket stuff that i want to get rid of uh, so i'm just going to start doing that try and just get this harness out so i can glide on the floor get it sorted out uh, so let's do that right now. What do we got going on here? This is just a big, big mess of wires. They single wires. Oh, this wire. Oops. What the heck was that? This uh, orange wire right here. I don't know if you can see that. That is actually for the PAT system. It's a wire that goes to the ignition switch, or the ignition uh, lock cylinder, rather. Got this connector right here. And I can't see it. Come on, get out of there. slack on this harness. This one should pop out. There's one half of it anyway. There's the other part of this one that I didn't see. This is for the cruise control, probably. It's actually going to the brake pedal. It's hitting on the steering column. Got a couple of brake switches right here. Let me see if I can shove this back into place. It is definitely in the way hitting over here. Okay, let me get this. This floor, man, it is so comfortable to lie on. You wouldn't believe how comfortable it is. It's got the seams coming up, pinch seams, pinch welds. It's got bolt 
studs coming up they go into seats it's really comfortable okay I got this is definitely the that's the headlamp headlamp uh, bright light switch this is got to be the cruise control it's got a couple of connectors here try to figure out how this comes apart Okay, I got one more connector. This is the brake switch. And of course I'm blind, I can't see it. And then the only thing, oh no, this is, this is definitely the cruise control something or other. Gotta get that out. I'm not going to be able to do it unless I lie on this comfortable floor. Got a clip on either side. That's it. And then the only thing left is this. Looks like a, uh, a shock sensor. Shock sensor being, uh, you know, whenever the vehicle feels some kind of shock like somebody touched it or hit it or whatever then makes the alarm go off and it's right here attached to the steering column and I am just going I'm just going to cut this I'm just tired of dealing with it okay so this is what I was talking about when I said shock sensor it's like a uh, and uh, I don't know, it has like a spring in there and stuff and when it moves, it, it like vibrates and it makes this alarm go off. We've got a ground, got these two wires and they're just going into this excessive harness, accessory harness. This is a relay and these two yellow wires, these are for ignition switch. So this is your don't start you know uh relay so i have to take that off and put those back together so i know what that is but i am just just i'm just gonna snip these off don't care get them out of here so oh no we just gotta deal with this this right here and you know what? Here we go. That's done. There's another wiring harness that goes into this right here. I'm just trying to get this out of here, you know, enough so that I can actually see the floor. Um, so I need to take these two I don't know what they are, seven millimeter, 11 millimeter, I don't know. But I need to take these two out and then this can go in and that whole harness can go through there. So let me do that right now. This is a nine millimeter of all sockets it's a nine and on the other side
like this is holding on right here. But the thing, same thing on the bottom. Okay, I think the bottom one just popped off. Yeah, there's, there's the clip that was on the bottom. So, and there's a seal. The seal's still in good condition. So, let's see. Let's see you where we are now. So, this is coming down. This is the back of this connector. Let's pop that thing back in. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you noticed. I'm sure that you did. That little nut inside there, that thing was turning. I was turning and turning and turning forever and it was not coming out and uh, it turns out the nut on the in other side was spinning. So. I got wiring going in here for some reason. And this, this is some bad stuff here. Trying to get through that. I don't know what that is. It's another relay. Just sitting in there. Sitting in all this goop. This is that, uh, what do you call it? Air conditioning tape. The, uh, oh God, I can't remember the name of it right now. That black stuff that gets all goopy. Anyway, get this over here. Put that back over there. Figure out where this this harness goes up and around over to the other side. It's for your power windows or whatever. Um, great. I think I can work with this. I mean, I just wanted to be able to get inside here. Um, I wasn't planning on pulling the entire harness out because it's not that bad. Although, look at this ground right here. That ground probably needs to be updated. Uh, this went to the to the um, seat belt, so that it knew whenever you weren't put, didn't have your seat belt on. Um, and it, these seat belt um, mounts. They look like they can come off. There is a bolt in there. There is a bolt over here. And we can take them out. They're not welded in. So we don't have to cut them off. Um, do not plan on using them. So uh, we can get rid of them if they're in the way. Um, and they make a, a seat delete kit. I think that's what they call it. But uh, what it is, is you put your carpet over here and your carpet uh, kind of has holes and stuff right here where cause, uh, you put in your um, seat bottom and you bolt your seat bottom on. What the kit is, it's like a, a little metal box that goes over this that looks really nice and it bolts in and it just stops this bracket from being in the way. And it's just a little box, I don't know. Um, I mean, you could make your own course or you could just cut this out if you're ever going to use it um so yeah let's um i don't know see what else see what else we can do okay i found these two wires and this is a ground that's right there and where do these two wires go well remember the two wires down here that were chewed off those two wires and I mean they reach so I would say that these two wires are ground wires so at least we found that I'm 
try and figure out this wiring harness. Figure out how to get all of this stuff out of here. This harness right here. I am going to deal with right now. These two wires. Gone. Deleted. Done. Get them out of here. Don't come back. I definitely need to go through that harness. There's a lot of extra wire there that we don't need from accessories and stuff. I'm gonna need to get all that out. And I need to take all this stuff off. Windshield wipers. This little cowl panel thing that needs to be cleaned up. Try and uh, separate this C100 wire connector right here. Get all of this junk out of here. And just like work our way around, you know. And uh, definitely going to be taking the AC condenser out and the whole front bumper and everything like that. There's the horns right there. I don't know what condition those are in. I don't even remember trying to honk the horn, but uh, yeah, still got a long way to go. Okay guys, I think that I'm gonna call it a day. My camera's getting hot and overheating on me. Uh, so yeah, it is pretty hot and even here in the shop. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's recap, you know, what it seems like, it seems like we didn't get anything done today. I mean, I don't know, I feel like I, did some work but it just seems like we didn't do anything so we cleaned all this out you know and that's nice you know it needs to be washed out and um i'm gonna get the um the cheek poker in here and i still have to get some uh some uh body shop type tools and stuff like that and i'm looking into that um i mean for instance uh to uh, drill out these um, <clears throat> these uh, pinch welds or whatever you want to call them, these welds in here, to drill these things out. They make a special drill bit so you can drill through these without drilling through the entire thing. But just the drill bit, just the drill bit alone, it's just a small little drill bit, it's like $100. Um, I'm looking into getting some uh, Milwaukee tools um, and I think I can get a uh, grinder, a uh, little sander thing that uh, body shop people use to take that stuff out. I'm going to get one of those. That way I can use it for other things too and it's not just a little drill bit. Of course it costs more than $100. Um, but anyway, uh, back to the recap. We cleaned this up some. We got rid of some of the stuff. We got the C100 connector pulled apart and uh, pulled out of here. Uh, we got the brake booster out. We found some chewed up wiring. That's amazing. Uh, what else? We discovered that this latch is broken, which I'm pretty sure I did that. And it's my fault. I was jumping around in the vehicle and the thing came down, smacked it. So this is gonna have to be replaced or fixed or whatever so i'm gonna have to order parts on that we got all this carpet out here we found that this thing's a nice nice drum um one thing that we did not do for sure is find the trim codes oh, man i cannot believe it where are the trim codes why can't i find it uh, if any of you guys know where it is I mean, my guess is somebody took them out. Somebody just took it. Why would you do that? I, I don't know. I, I, why would you take the trim codes? Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. But if any of you guys know what this color is, this pure white or whatever they call it, you know, please, uh, you know, run around down in the comments. So let me know. Let me know what the trim code is for that uh that color so i can get the stuff ordered i do have stuff on order for this 
to uh, you know sandpaper you know stuff like that like I said I need body shop type tools and look at the paint coming off over there uh, but yeah I need to get we need to tackle this tackle this a big time I think uh, what I'm gonna do since this seems to be going slow is uh, in my spare time when it's not my day off like today and uh, I'm gonna come in here and just start taking all this stuff apart and get it out of here I need to make a video showing us fixing something you know rather than just taking stuff apart you know it's the, the more I dig the deeper I get the more problems I find you know and the deeper I go you know so uh, I need to it needs to come to a stopping point you know we need to find it all or, or just say hey you know it's good enough so um, <laughs> um so that's that's gonna be it for today. You know, maybe if I uh, do that kind of stuff, I can record it and just make a, a different type of video. I don't know, or maybe I'll put it on uh, on Facebook. Uh, go check out uh, Shop Forma Garage on Facebook. There's a link in the description box below. I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.